Good morning, I'm Bob Beck with the Franciscan Retreats and Spirituality Center in Prior Lake, Minnesota. Here this morning with Father Steve McMichael, one of the friars that lives in Prior Lake here at the Friary at the Franciscan Retreat Center. And Father Steve is also a professor in medieval theology at the University of St. Thomas. Good morning, Father Steve. Good morning. Hmm. Today, we're here with another of our series titled Pathways to Prayer. Today, Father Steve will look into the idea, the concept of study as a pathway to prayer. Well, I would like to begin by talking about my own ex personal experience because um, when I went to St. Louis University as, a, as actually um, in formation for the Franciscans in 1975, my high school experience was so poor that, uh, and I'm not going to go into that, that's a whole other video of my own past, but uh, let me say that I've sort of numbed myself out to um, the world of education and the world of study. And, and when I went to St. Louis University as, um, as an aspirant to the Franciscan community, I started taking courses at the University of St. Thomas, or at the uh, University of St. Louis, I should say, St. Louis University, Jesuits. And um, I, I discovered this whole world of learning that, um, that I think I knew about, especially in sixth grade. Mr. Ostrom was a phenomenal teacher, and I look back to sixth grade as one of my, the golden age of my earlier education. But when I was at St. Louis University, I started taking courses, and uh, ones that, one course that attracted me was uh, a course on the Old Testament, and I came to understand the Jewish tradition. And the Jewish tradition uh, has really fed me, actually, because after the fall of the temple in 70, the rabbis who sort of congregated gathered together to discuss how is Judaism going to continue to thrive, and these are Jews who did not convert to Christianity, but they, they came to a decision of rather than temple sacrifices, life would be centered around uh, three things that would be prayer, it would be the mitzvot, the living out the commandments, and also the life of study. And it, it became such an important thing for them in terms of how study was to feed the life of, of the spirit and to engage in the text because they understood the primary means of revelation is the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures as they would uh, call them. For them it's the Testament, it's not the Old Testament. And so they, would, um, they were really engaged in the study of this. In fact, in the rabbinic tradition, which is, continues on even today in the Jewish tradition, study in the world of learning is uh, so important that one of the sacred texts uh, in the Talmud, they speak about that study is so important that God, God's very self studies three hours, the Torah, every single day. Now, when I tell that to my students, they don't, uh, they don't quite get that, but, they, you know, it's the idea that God, God himself actually studies the Torah for three hours and what it means and sort of it's a humorous commentary on basic of that. So the life of learning is actually an engagement with God, therefore it is a, it is, it is prayer. So it feeds the prayer life prayer life feeds the life of study and then you live out those uh, commandments in the mitzvot and for them the whole purpose was of course study should lead to action so it's always this sense of that you're not studying for studying sake I also um, part of my early conversion experience was reading the works of Thomas Merton and Thomas Merton spoke of you know, his primary mission was to basically teach the world um, what monastic prayer was about. And I found that um, in the monastic tradition, the rule of Benedict and so forth, that you know the life is centered around scripture and of course the life of prayer. And you know, of course, and the prayer and scripture come together. And so there's um, there's that um, there's that interconnectedness of those aspects of scripture. And even in the rule of Benedict it speaks about also having time to read. And read wa reading was uh, what we would consider to be study, meaning learning. And so they understood the monastic tradition, the more that you learn, the more that you are actually can then engage in the text. And so what develops in the 12th, 13th centuries is what is called Lexio Divina, 
uh, this is, I think, very popular among certain circles in Roman Catholicism now about Lectio Divina, meaning that I take a, por a portion of scripture, I take a little chunk, I then, I then um, re um, pray about it, meditate on it, and then come to contemplation, the movement union. The ultimate uh, aim of any sort of engagement in Lectio Divina is union with God. And so they understood this process is, is a way to, to pray in order to lead to union with God. But they understood this is that, that I need to understand the text. And so in the monastic tradition, the life of study becomes very important because the more I know scripture, the more that I study, the more that I learn from scripture, the more that that feeds me feeds my life of prayer, leading me ultimately to union. We normally came to the Franciscans, and this, is, this was a big surprise to me, because when I joined the Franciscans, I thought Francis was really counter-education. Um, Francis said we are not to own books and so forth like this. He also said we're not supposed to ride horses. Uh, this is why I never considered ever having a Mustang, even though that's my dream car. But, um, but he said, you know, the, the attitude was with Francis was not the thing of against learning. It was what learning does um, for you. And it, in the Middle Ages, it could be certainly as a university developed, it could be for professors, it could be a symbol of power. And that's what Francis was against because le learning should actually engage you more with others. Meaning that as Francis envisioned it, the, the more that I receive, the more that I need to give. That's, the, that's really the essential elements of poverty. And so Francis, it was not, it was not the engagement in learning and study, it was more of this sense of that I am not using it for power and I'm not, I'm not um, wasting my time, that it's, it's actually, it's, it's how I receive this to pass it on to others. St. Bonaventure, who I've learned a lot from in my own, uh, throughout these years, it's I have a, this active engagement with Francis and also an active engagement with Bonaventure. And Bonaventure spoke about the theology of the three books, by which he meant that there are three books that God gives us. There's the book of creation, and this was you know, from Genesis 1 through 3. Basically, it's the gift, um, gift that God gives us in terms of creation itself, and creation is this world in which it is a book. It's open for us to explore the mystery of and including even to study it. Secondly, because of the fall and so forth, the Bonaventure said, then creation itself, because of sin, we were sort of blind to it. We then, we then need another book, and of course, that's the book of scripture. But he said already we have a third book, and the third book is the book of the soul, meaning the heart, the centerpiece of your being. And so he would understand this as sort of the psychological element of that. And he believed that if we study those things, um, creation of scripture and even our own souls, that that interconnectedness would arrive at, at union with God. And so it's an active interplay with that. And Bonaventure, as a professor at the University of Paris, would have understood that, that study is not just my gaining knowledge for knowledge's sake. It is actually engagement above all, and we find this, as I mentioned, the Jewish tradition, that you find this engagement in the, in the text. And the more that I study, the more that I learn about, the more that I learn about those, the, the word, scriptures, the more that I can be actually engaged in that world. And for Bonaventure, you'd say scripture itself leads us always back to creation. I, I've been um, reading um, about Francis's Canticle to the Creatures, which is a masterpiece. It shows Francis's learning. He is not an idiot. When you read the Canticle, it's the most incredible piece of, of uh, poetry and literature. Because Francis is engaged and engaged, and out of his prayer life, out of the experience of creation and so forth, he comes out with this magnificent um, poem, which actually then becomes the basis of, of Pope Francis's Laudato Si, the, um, the encyclical on the environment. But Francis, it was an academic engagement with his prayer life of scripture and of the world around him. And this is where Bonaventure was getting these 
uh, he was getting this from the world of theology, but he's also understanding this as this is Francis. Francis himself was engaged in the study of scripture, but he also was fed by the world around us. I mean, this is a beautiful day here in Minnesota. This is just like so incredible. I was hoping that I have a hummingbird feeder and I told the hummingbirds to come do a formation around my head, but they're, <laughs> they're not showing up. Uh, two of them flew by just a little while ago before this taping, but it's this, um, it's what Bonaventure was saying is, is that it is really the more that we study scripture, the more that we study nature, the more that we study inside of ourselves that we actually come to understand God in God's totality and the creation as a reflection of this. And so for me, the, the important thing about this is that the life of study of is not simply just learning for learning's sake. Um, in the Middle Ages, they considered that to be sort of the sin of sins, that um, learning can learn to pride. Learning can also lead to an endless search, um, which I feel like sometimes I'm involved in. But it's really, it's like, um, it's really about engaging in learning about the world, learning about the text of scripture and also the theological texts that help us understand that but also it is helpful to understand the inside um, person and those three words connect i just want to end with um with a story that uh, i was struggling with my life of prayer that i would i didn't feel like i was like spending enough time in quiet i was not doing the lexio divina and um, my spiritual director said what do you do a lot, um, how, many, how many hours of the day do you already actually engage in preparing for class? Um, then the world of theology, the world of reading scripture, um, and so forth. And I said, well, many. And he goes, that is prayer. And it, it, like, I, it shocked me because many people, because they compartmentalize things, they think, okay, this is my life of study, this is my life of prayer, this is my life of liturgy, for example, this is my life outside of this, this is my recreation, and we divide up. What I believe, the Franciscan thing, and this is what I really believe in, is that all of these things, if it is an engagement with God, it is, it is God's gift to us. And this is what I believe is creation itself, the text, and also each one of us inside of ourselves. The more we study those three things, and everything else that around us, the more that we can arrive at union with God, which is what is what prayer is about. It's really arriving at union with God, and I believe the life of learning, the life of study, is one of those avenues, along with art and music and all these other things that we have available. All of these things should be leading us to union.